Hey, what's up everyone? Mendel here. I hope you're all doing awesome and wonderful. So in this video, I'm going to show you some tips on automation in a metal mix. So as always, let's dig right in. Here we go. All right, so here we are in Cubase. This is a short metal track I wrote. And let's first listen to the track and then we'll dive into the automation. So here we go. All right, so cool thrashy intro and then heavy breakdown in the middle. Now, one of the things I do most of the time in mixes automation wise is actually on the kick drums. So over here we have that fast 16 kick part. I'll just play it one more time. So at that part, I'll just solo the drums. Now, when those kicks become 16s, they add a lot of energy to the mix, which is cool, but it could be a bit too much energy, especially when after it, they stop doing the 16s. So what I like to do when I have fast 16 kicks or either fast kick patterns or whatever, just slightly dip the kick drum, like either one decibel or maximum two. So I just select the range selection tool and just around here, let's say, or just a bit further, let's see around here here perhaps, and just dip it. Let's see, let's just try one decibel. So it could even be a bit more. So let's exaggerate it. Let's do a lot. Now that's too much, obviously. So that sounds about right. a tiny bit more. Now that to me sounds nice even though, which is almost one and a half dB. Cool, yeah, so that's it for the kick drums. Now where I probably use automation the most, especially when mixing metal or rock, is when a solo or like a lead comes in. If it's like a guitar solo or like, like chord, chord notes in the leads, something extra that adds to the song, I use automation. So to simplify what I'm going to do is I like to take the analogy of seeing my mix or basically any metal mix or any mix in general as a big full bucket of water, like filled to the rim, to the top, drips are falling off. Which means if a guitar solo comes in, extra water, the whole bucket will overflow. So what I like to do is when the guitar solo comes in, I like to take a big scoop of water, the rhythm guitars in this case, taking out so there's room in the bucket so the solo can come in. And when the solo is done, so it's out of the bucket, put that water back in of the rhythm guitars. So the bucket stays full the whole time, but doesn't overflow, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna press play, and this is without automation, but hopefully you can feel that when the solo comes in, it adds energy, but when the solo is done, the whole mix is kind of weak. Like I definitely feel when a solo is done, I'm like, okay, there's something missing. So what I like to do is just select that range when the solo is playing and just take it a bit down. Let's just try this, how it feels. That's the most important thing to me. Then 
this better. Perhaps we can push it even a bit more. So this is, let's say, a bit over two decibels. So that's a bit too much, but I think around here is the sweet spot. And perhaps the solo could be just turned down just a little. So this should be good. Yeah, so I can definitely feel now that when the solo is done, the guitars are picking back up like the energy of the song, but it's not really audible because it's happening during that solo. So that's one cool trick you can do to keep your mix even down the song. So the last thing I want to show you is to give a breakdown a bit more energy when it kicks in. And it's so simple, but it works every time. So we have a breakdown starting around here. Right, and it sounds cool, but the energy is still a bit too much even. And in this case, I don't want it even like I did with the souls. I want it to have like when the whole breakdown kicks in, it slams a bit more. So what I like to do is just, is this is so simple, but just even two bars, but let's just try one bar first, just a tiny dip before it kicks in. It's a tiny dip. Also do it on the bass, a tiny dip. So that's the first thing. Let's see how it feels. It's very slightly, but it still works. It still works. I think I can push it even a bit further. So that's cool. Yeah, I really like that. One more check. So now it feels like and then it whole, uh, the whole slam thing uh, starts in. And then the last thing, just the first kick, just the very first kick, just give that an extra boost. So this first kick, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna boost that a couple of decibels. And let's just see how far we can push it. So we have that whole pullback feel of the rhythm guitars going down like one and a half decibels, same for the bass guitar, and then they come back to normal volume, but also that very first kick is a bit louder than the rest, just for that first smack. Yeah, that's it. So let's take a few measures before it. Okay, it's a bit too much, but just that should be good. So just that first kick, it's like hitting three decibels extra. All right, and there are some basics on using automation in a metal mix. Experiment with this. You can do this on anything you want. Like for example, the thing I showed you on the solo guitars, you can also try it when, for example, you have a rhythm going, but also clean guitars come in. So those rhythm guitars make room for the clean guitars. Experiment with it. Have fun with it. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. And until then, see you next time. Cheers.